dynamic of it. Mm -hmm. And so we do accelerate the particles, which is what the whole people find the accelerator, right? So we'll get we'll get to a point where you can there's some glasses you're gonna wear to see something else. So, um, now when you hear particle accelerators, a lot of times when you talk like CERN and Switzerland and Fermilabs, they're actually circling particles like we do in this in our ring here, and then they actually collide the particles. Because they're trying to understand what the particles are made of. In our case, we circulate particles, and it turns out that when you accelerate a particle, like an electron, which is part of an atom or a proton, it gives off light. And when I say light, I mean like uh, like infrared light and X rays and ultraviolet light as well as visible light. And so, as the particle goes around, the electrons go around, they give off light, go around the corner, and the light travels on these beam lines. And, and these are the, the experiments are done at the end of these beam lines, all the way around. So it's a tool for scientists, and they come and do work all the way from, from looking at cancer cells and stem cells to looking at, at, at wood, uh, analyzing wood, uh, paint from paintings, like we had a Van Gogh painting here, and, um, and the sea scrolls, to analyze it. And with the light, you can actually identify what it's made out of, uh, what kind of molecules are in it, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and so, so scientists come here, do their work, and then they go back to the university. Publish their results. So we have a group from actually Russia working here. They're working on a beam line over here. Eventually, they move to another one. Um, and you know, that's we have lots of people coming in more. So, like I said, they're going to close it down in January. So <laughs> it's very weird to think about that. But, yeah. So I'm looking for a job. <laughs> um, so, but there's two things about the science that goes on here that I wanted to, to show you. Um, one is. We have electrons going out from a charged particle, and at the way we make them remove them is through magnets. There's little boxes here to represent. You'll see when we went out there, there's three, three magnets here, three there, and so on. So the particles keep going around in a circle. Because the particles aren't going through anything like material, not through a wire, but through an empty space, through a vacuum. That's the only way we can make them go as fast as we need to go to create this light. So I have here, it generates electrons. Like an old uh, TV tube actually would do the same thing. Um, here's two wires, so you generate electrons back here. And then I have a thing in the middle that makes electrons go fast in that direction, not as fast as that for sure. Uh, and then they hit this white material here, you know, which is painted on the inside of the glass bowl. And whenever an electron hits it, it will give off green light. So the reason you see in green is because an electron interacted with that white material and then gave off the light. You can't see the electrons going through. Okay. They're very small particles, smaller than an atom. Okay. I have a um, stupid question. No stupid question. Um, so, electrons are just electrons regardless of what atom they're in, right? So it's not yeah. like there's a tiny of electron that hits that during. Right. Okay. Right. What makes it green is it just whatever the material it's is? It's whatever the material is, right? So on your on an old-fashioned TV. You actually had a beam of electrons hitting the back of your TV screen, and there were three dots of the primary colors. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was controlled enough so it would hit either you know, you know, red, green, blue, or whatever, and whichever one hit, and then go to the next one, and it create the image of the image, and then it creates the sense of movement because it's going so fast. That's how the color filter on my projector works. Yeah. So, um, right. So we have I'm telling you, an electron beam here going across here, and actually, in the middle, there's this cross. And it's blocking the electrons from reaching it. That's why you see the shadow. Okay. So, magnet, magnet, here. A magnet. Okay. This is a magnet. Thank you. And these are electrons. Magnet. So we'll find here. Uh, you want to come over here? Okay. Now, very gently move it close to that green. <laughs> see that move? Now move it away. Yeah, do that. Move it in now. So, can you guys can try it? So, okay. Yeah, go ahead and do it again. Okay. So you can control where those electrons are going by using magnets. That's why we have magnets all over our ring, and all all the accelerators have magnets like that to control where the particles go. Oh yeah. I have to say, I did that to my television once. Bad idea. Yeah, bad idea. Okay. So, except we do a little, a little more control experiment. <laughs> if I can borrow two of those. Okay, I'm going to do something. You tell me which way this goes, okay? I'm going to bring in, see how they stick together. 
I'm gonna bring these two like this. Now, which way did it go? Towards you or away from you? They were towards me. Towards me. Okay. Now let me flip this. Now which way did it go? Towards you or away from you? Away from you. Yeah. So we can control which way the thing bends by doing this, and we do that all the way around the ring. That's what goes around the circle. Okay. By the polarity of the magnets. Yeah. Nice. Now there's a. Oh, you done? Okay. Um, I'll use yours. Now there's another problem that we have to solve using magnets, and that is, as you can see right here actually, the, the, the source of electrons back here, it, the little tiny filament, and, oh, thank you. And it's very small, and as it travels, it gets wider and wider, so it diverges. Mm -hmm. And you see it's this big around over here. And so we have to actually uh, get to go back down to its original size, or not let it get this big, because the tube is only like this big around, going all the way around this thing, okay? Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, Glasses will focus light, or photons, if you want to, particles of light. These are electrons, so we need magnets. So I'm going to bring in the um, same, same pole, they're, they're going to pull each other here. I'm going to do this. Okay. Let's see how it squishes down like that. So I'm, I'm squeezing it down, so I'm squeezing the beam, but only in one, in one dimension. Notice it's not up and down, but just sideways. But if I turn the poles, bring the other pole in, I can squeeze it in the other direction. So if I have two sets of these, I can squish it down to a little point again, and, and have that, and you keep doing that all the way around, and, and that, that's how this thing works. Okay. That's cool. So, that's so tell me again, each one of those beams are a place for like a different team to work? Yeah, so you have oh, shoots. The, the electrons going around this thing for about eight hours, and as they go, and as they turn a corner because of these magnets here, mm -hmm. I can show you there, they give off light. Mm -hmm. Because when you slug it apart, when the light travels down these beam lines, and every one of these points is a place where you can do experiments. Okay. Using, you know, the, all the whole range of light we make infrared light, visible, uh, UV light, X ray light all comes down these beam lines, and then depending on what kind of experiment you're doing, you choose the light you want to follow your sample. So they're all different kinds of, of light? Or they're. But they're all being generated, it's all the same, this whole range being generated. Right. And that's, that's why you need the synchrotron, that's why you need the device, because usually um, when you generate light, like in a light bulb in the ceiling, it only generates pretty much visible light. You can get a device that will generate like infrared light, which is heat, or something, but you don't have something that generates all this kind of light at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so that's why synchrotrons are very popular and good you know, for doing experiments. Because then what you do actually is you select the, the wavelength of frequency, you're talking about light, Fall in your sample that you study, and then you go to the next one, and the next one, you see what effect it has. Um, actually, you have an, ex an accelerator like this that moves electrons and generates light on your house, most likely. And when you get this, this is, this is a piece of it. It's in your house. Microwave? Yes, it's in your kitchen. Microwave. Some so, people don't like my there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the the magnetron from inside the microwave. And and there's the two, you know, this is the connection of the power, the two wires. And there's uh, two magnets, one on the top, one on the bottom. So these are magnets. And there's a little tube in there, and you have electrons circling around in there, <laughs> making microwaves, and they come out this. So microwaves are also part of the, what scientists call the electromagnetic spectrum. So you have radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, all the way. Okay. okay, then the last part, which you may be interested in, is kind of the science. What do you do with this light? Right? Oh, they're drying, very good. So if you want, I have some glasses you can wear. Do you want to try a pair of glasses on? She may need some help. Is she would like me. She's coming in. Come here. So, this is a tool, actually, and it's actually related to the, what we have downstairs. Or directly related. Um, and when you have a tool, I'll have to do my question again. Okay, you want a pair? You might have to hold them up. I don't know. Look at the lights. So, yeah, look at the ceiling lights. Give you a clue of what these things do. Ah, thank you. Indeed. So. So white light is actually made up of all the colors rainbow, of the rainbow, 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 rainbow. And if you if you mix the colors of the rainbow together, you see this thing rainbow, called white. White is not actually a color. Just like black is not actually a color. Oh, what am I doing? So white
you mix it all together and our brain kind of goes, it goes in all the light. So you take white light and you bend this weak wavelength of frequency to bend a little bit differently and you get this, the rainbow. So there you see a, a, a rainbow, that's what these glasses do. So, let's take a look at some other sources of light. It's like a bar, yes, like a barcode. In fact, that's a very good description. I hadn't heard before. Um, it's like a barcode because it's like a, it's like a fingerprint. This is without the glasses. So, do you see all the colors of the rainbow there? Yes. No. How about blue? Do you see blue? Or purple? No. I see some green. So, so the colors you see, the, the, there's a gas in that tube. It's neon gas. They create the patterns. And that pattern is unique to Neil. So if you saw this pattern, you know, looking for the telescope at a distance and on the moon, if it's light on the moon, and you saw this pattern, you say there's neon and that light on the moon. Which is how we know how the universe is made up, you know, what stars are made up of, for example. Now, that's one, but let me show you a different one. The helium back there, there's how many different uh, colors do you see? Or different uh, colors? Those represent uh, certain particular wavelengths of light. So, the two colors you see is actually missing light in between. And if I send light through the helium, uh, they would absorb only those side colors. And you see the whole rainbow. Except this is interesting. So you'd see the exact reverse of what you're seeing now. Right, so you do that with the reverse. So if you look at sunlight, for example, and you really analyze most of the rainbows there, but if you really look carefully with the device that glasses, you'll see missing parts of the rainbow because of, of the atoms that are in the sun. Okay. Um, so that's how we so that's how we have a synchrotron. It produces very bright light, we shine it on a sample. And then the sample absorbs some of those colors. And, and so and then, by what's missing, you know what it is. Exactly. It's, a, it's like a puzzle trying to figure out. And of course, it gets more complicated when you have multiple elements together and you know, it goes from there. But these, this is the basics. Okay? Interesting. Well, thank you. Okay. That's in my speech. I'm going to turn the lights on. And you can keep these glasses if you want. And we can go take some pictures. I think you need to get dressed. I'm going to get dressed. Someone needs to get dressed. 